Well, let's try to predict what would happen first here. We have, I don't think we've talked about this reagent, sodium hydride, but this is a reagent that the textbook uses. We have uses. last semester. Oh, yeah? Okay. Supply well, H minus. That's right. Now, what, in what way is it going to supply the H minus? So what, what's the H minus going to do? Break the carbonyl pi bond. So you're thinking that it might act like a nucleophile here? Yeah. Okay. Now, it turns out that this is not a good source of nucleophilic hydrogens. This is not a good source of nucleophilic hydrogens. We basically just have to have that memorized. It's related to the fact that hydrogen is so small. Really small things are not really good nucleophiles. So this is a source of H minus because it's ionically bonded to the sodium, but it's not, it turns out not to be a great nucleophile. We kind of just have to have that memorized, just like we memorize, say, that sulfate ions are not good nucleophiles. Well, if something's a good nucleophile, what other role is it likely to be able to be good at as well? Really? Wait, would you say sorry? So actually, nucleophiles generally are not good leaving groups, because after all, being negative. Sorry. Yeah, so I was asking is, this negative charge here is making this into a good nucleophile, or the negative charge often makes things nucleophilic, even though in this case, this is not a great nucleophile. Well, what's the other thing that a negative charge allows something to do, besides being a nucleophile? It allows it to be a base. This is going to be one of the, the um, obstacles that we have to deal with this term. Oftentimes, things can uh, reasonably act as either nucleophiles or bases. But we have to have memorized that sodium hydride is a source of basic hydrogen. This is a source of basic hydrogen. We just said that it's not going to be a good source of a nucleophile. So basically, we should think of this as a base. What do bases want to do? They want to take a proton. Well, who would it be logical for this base to take the proton from? The alpha that's right. We were just talking about how we can take that from the alpha carbon. So let's show the mechanism for that. The H steals an H? That's right. It couldn't do that if it was an H plus, which is what we've mainly seen in the past, but this is an H minus because it's bonded to the sodium. That's stabilizing this negative charge on this carbon. Resonance. That's right. In fact, I think one of you went right ahead and actually put the negative charge on this oxygen. That's okay. Um, like I said, I find uh, I think it's better for a beginning student to put the negative charge on the alpha carbon, but you'll see people do it both ways. So, in any case, um, we uh, what would we call this type of ion? Enolate. Yeah, we just saw a way to make an enolate. So, sodium hydride is one good way to make an enolate. All right, and now what would be a logical way for this enolate to react? with this ethyl? Um, SN2. Okay, good. So let's finish that off. One thing that I keep, I'm going to keep encouraging you to do is labeling the alpha carbon. Good. So let's see. Uh, label. So label the alpha carbon here. Right. Good. And that, I think, helps you to see that maybe you, uh, you dropped the carbon originally over here. Okay. So the alpha carbon will attack. And maybe it helps to put in some numbers here so we don't drop any carbons. And as somebody was already saying, this is a pretty typical SN2 type reaction. It turns out that we can use enolates to do SN2 reactions. We can use enolates to do SN2. This should be interesting to us because now it's another way to form carbon-carbon bonds. Now we're starting to see more and more ways of forming carbon-carbon bonds. We call this an alkylation because we're adding an, adding an extra alkyl group over here. So this is an alkylation reaction where we use a enolate to do an SN2 type reaction. 
first we needed to use a base in order to make the enolate. And then we put in an electrophile. So I just wanted to show here that uh, enolates can act like nucleophiles, and they can do the types of things that nucleophiles can do, like an SN2 reaction. All right. By the way, this reaction has some problems or difficulties. Oftentimes, it's not the most useful reaction for synthesis, although sometimes you'll see it and sometimes you won't, is that um, you, we might later on see some alternatives to this that are more useful for synthesis. However, this is a reaction covered in the book that you might see on the exam, where we simply use an enolate for a straightforward SN2 type reaction. Although, as I said, sometimes uh, sometimes there's some superior alternatives to this. All right, so the key thing here is just to emphasize that we can use um, enolates as nucleophiles, but of course, first we need a base, and this is a base, a base that you'll commonly be seeing here. Hydride is not a nucleophile, but it is a base. And do you get NaH2, like how do you draw it? How do you write it? So from this step, I suppose I should have said that the other product was H2, as well that will just bubble out, because this is hydrogen gas. And the sodium is just a spectator ion. So if we wanted to, we could have shown the sodium over here balancing this negative charge as a counter ion. Usually people don't care too much about that at this point uh, in the course. But yeah, if you wanted to be completely uh, correct, you could draw that over here, balancing okay. this, this. And like I said, you might see a different version of this where um, people start with the enolate with a negative charge on the oxygen. Uh, but for me, that's a little misleading because it's not the oxygen that's attacking the ethyl group, it's the alpha carbon over here. So for me, this is a simpler way to write it. 